Hello there, general science guys and gals, and welcome to our video over section 15.2, the properties of matter. Picking up right where we left off uh, with 15.1, the classification of matter. Again, to give you a little perspective of where we're at here with this unit, this is unit three, part two, matter. We just got done talking about the states of matter and how particles um, align themselves and how they're energized and just the different characteristics that they have to where they can actually take one of those three states, solids, liquids, and gases. And then we looked a little bit about how um, understanding why a solid is a solid, a liquid, a liquid, a gas, a gas, understanding that stuff at the molecular level can help us to uh, describe some common occurrences in nature and also uh, then use it to benefit us on a daily life. So we started, studied the properties of fluids and the behaviors of gases. Um, now getting into how we group and organize matter a little bit further with the classification matter 15.1 and the properties of matter 15.2. So today we're going to look at stuff like uh, physical properties, chemical properties, physical changes, and chemical changes. All right. So starting off with physical properties and physical change. Okay. Um, defined. Pretty straightforward here, black and white. Uh, physical property of any form of matter is any characteristic of material that you can observe without changing the identity of the substance. All right. Some classic examples of physical properties would be like uh, color. Okay. Like for instance, this uh, object right here is orange. All right. This object is yellow. So color. Uh, shape. These are both circles or spheres. All right. Um, size. This one is large. This little sphere is small. Okay. Uh, density. Not much mass here. A lot more mass here. Similar shape. Greater density, less density. Uh, melting point and boiling point. Okay. So those are some great classic examples of physical properties. All right. Um, we use physical properties to help us describe materials and substances. How do we do so? Well, by discussing the appearance of that material. So like the shape, the color, um, the size, etc. We could also describe the behavior of that material using physical properties like any type of magnetic attraction. Um, we could also talk the viscosity, so like its resistance to flow. So we can also talk uh, physical properties in relation to how materials or matter behaves. Okay. Um, we can also use physical properties to help separate mixtures. Now, you had a mixture at lunch today. You had some tropical fruit mix, okay? So you could actually observe the physical properties of the different pieces of fruit to separate them into maybe some different categories, okay? Um, we could also take this mixture right here, these uh, peanut M&Ms that are in this uh, glass beaker, and we could use a physical property to separate this mixture, physically separate it. I could use a physical property of color, all right? And I could get uh, kind of my group of greens. All right, got my group of greens right here. I could also separate it, make a group of reds, yellows, oranges, blues, and browns. Okay, so I could use color, a physical property, to separate a mixture. What others could I use? I'll let you think about that and mention that to me in class. Okay, um, anytime we have a physical change taking place, so moving on from physical properties to physical changes. Anytime we have a physical change taking place, it is a change in size, shape, or the state of matter in which the identity or substance remains the same. Water is a great example here, right? Water does not chemically change as it goes from solid, liquid, to gas, but it physically changes. Okay? It is going a, through a physical change. So it is changing in size, it's changing in shape, and it's staying changing in state. Okay? Specific physical properties can help identify multiple materials in a mixture. All right. Um, so again, we could use density, um, maybe the specific heat of some of these peanut M&Ms, melting point, boiling point. Uh, it's one way to separate mixtures that may be more difficult to separate than just based on size and shape. Okay, size, shape, and color. You may get some mixtures that are very complex, uh, almost uniform in appearance. Okay, therefore you would need to use such things as density, specific heat, melting point, and boiling point in order to separate them. Okay, a uh, classic one is salt water. Ask me in class. All right. Okay, moving on here. Chemical properties and chemical change. 
Um, defined a chemical property. A chemical property defined is any characteristic of a material that you can observe that produces one or more new substances. So we're not keeping the same substance here. We're actually having new substances, one or more, being created. A classic example of this would be like flammability, igniting something on fire. Why is this a good example of a chemical property if something can actually be engulfed in flames? Because that creates new substances. The act of combustion, breaking something down through fire, okay, creates new substances. A chemical change, by definition, is a change of one substance to another. One substance to another. All right? So, like combustion, flammability. A piece of wood is flammable. It can actually ignite in flames. It changes from wood to ash, gas, and smoke. All right? That's a classic example of a chemical change. We could also take this... Uh, white tablet right here and drop it in this water and we immediately start to see some gas bubbles released. Okay? There's a chemical change taking place. How do we know that? Because there are some major clues to chemical changes when they're taking place, such as heat adjustments, whether it's increasing or decreasing in heat, the formation of gas bubbles, it's the releasing of gas, chemical changes going down, formation of solids, so like if a precipitate was to uh, all of a sudden appear, um, releasings of odor, yeah, it smells a little bit, not much, but again, the release of odor, of a smell, can also trigger your thoughts to that a chemical change is taking place. And finally, the production of light or sound, like a big old pop, all right? That could be another example of a chemical change taking place. So that does it for physical properties, physical change, chemical properties, and chemical change. Um, a little bit of general information here about the properties of matter, okay? Real quick review, the conservation of mass, because this is also mentioned in 15.2, and we've talked about it already. Um, just want to review this for you. Uh, mass cannot be created nor destroyed, only can be rearranged. Figure 19 on page 475 does a great job of laying this out for you. Basically, the total mass of the reactants for a chemical reaction has to equal to, and will, will equal to, all the time, the total mass of the products. Conservation of mass. Mass cannot be created, or excuse me, matter cannot be created nor destroyed. Mass cannot be created nor destroyed, okay? It's matter, all right? It can only be rearranged, okay? That does it for this little video. Hopefully you get some good information here about properties of matter, physical, chemical properties, physical, chemical changes. See you in class.